Chargers Crown Division do you think will be the most wide open and competitive this year? I think the three-year-old pace is uh, shaping up to be a, a very uh, competitive field. Uh, they seem to be taking turns uh, on winning each week, and uh, I don't see anyone that's completely dominant. So uh, I think that could be a, a very good race. And the ones that were good earlier could come back by that time, too. This year, uh, I'd say uh, three-year-old pace and Colts. I think it's a toss-up between the trotting Colts and the trotting Phillies, two-year-olds. Uh, they're pretty unpredictable. And at that time of year, not always the favorite shows up. The open trot's fantastic. It's been that way all year. Uh, so is the older pacing mares. There have been a lot of great divisions, but I think the older trotting horse division, even with Sand Pale out of it, it's, it's been fantastic. The one I'm looking forward to the most at the moment would be the two-year-old pacing Colts. Uh, there's some really good uh, two-year-old pacing Colts. I still think um, the three-year-old pacing Colts will be because I think that, that they are so deep, those horses, and uh, there's some fresh faces changing barns. You know, Hillbilly Hanover and uh, Escape the News moving to Burke's barn could be a factor, and uh, and Sweet Lou, you know, these are good horses. So I still think that that's any horse could win that race. It's just who gets the best trip. I think it's definitely three-year-old Colts because uh, Pacers because... Uh, Every big stakes race, there's always another one that wins. They're very competitive. They're, it originally was always Sweet Lou, Sweet Lou. He was definitely a dominant one in that group. Um, but he's uh, he's still there. He's competitive with them all. But it's now come down to there's every ten horses that touch the gate, they're all there. You know what I mean? It's very tough. Probably the three-year-old pacing colts. I mean, there's, there's a, a lot of good three-year-old pacing colts. And it uh, just depends on who's on top of the game at, at that time. I mean, it looks like there's probably six or eight of them that can win. So it just depends on who gets the trip and who's the healthiest. I would have to say the, the most competitive and wide-open ones, probably the three-year-old trotting colts. Well, to tell you the truth, I, play, I pay the closest attention to the ones I'm in. And, and I really think all year long uh, the three-year-old colt trot uh, division has been wide open. Market share has won the big one so far, but I, I really think that there's a, there's a handful of horses that can come out on top in there. It's uh, uh, and hopefully we're we're the one. It looks like the three-year-old pace and Colts. It's uh, it's pretty wide open there. There's no dominant one. I think that'll be the, the toughest. The pacing three-year-old. It's always is competitive. You know, competitive and uh, probably will be again this year. I think the the most competitive division is definitely the three-year-old pacing Colts. You know, you have Heston Blue Chip, Better's Edge, Linda's Two Colts that were so good, Sweet Lou, uh, Mel Mara. I mean, you have a lot of horses in there. Panther Hanover who had a great start off of the rest. So, I mean, you have a lot of horses in there that can step up and win it. I'm going to say the three-year-old pacing Colts. I guess it's always the premier, you know, toughest division, of course, with the speed. and We'll have to go with three-year-old pacing Colts. I think the three-year-olds, pacing Colts. I would say uh, age pacer will be very competitive. And, uh, anyone there can win, I think. I think probably by the end of it, the two-year-old uh, pacing Colts is going to be quite a uh, quite a show. I think there's there's some three or four real top Colts that can win that race. I, I'd say that race here. Yeah. And what is your favorite Breeders' Crown moment? Uh, winning it with uh, with Earl when I was just a young fella. I was, that's definitely my favorite. I've got two of them. Winning the Breeders' Crown with Kingsbridge at Northfield, upsetting Western Hanover in the three-year-old division, and the age division with That'll Be Me upsetting Pacific Rocket at Northfield Park. The 2007 two-year-old Colt Pace, um, I owned uh, a piece of Santana Blue Chip, and he's will always be one of my favorite horses. And uh, uh, at that time, being my first Breeders' Crown entrant, um, remembering the days at Pompano Park uh, with Bruce Beck and, and Gary Seibel doing the coverage. At that time, it was the only uh, standard of races that were on mainstream television, and I just looked forward the whole year watching those. Uh, and uh, to, to win that race, to get up by a nose in dramatic fashion, uh, it was it was the, the thrill of a lifetime for me in harness racing. 
Um, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to say it was when I got to drive my first, uh, very first Breeders' Crown. I went to Poconos, and that was such an amazing experience. I drove uh, Wilson Ader for Rob Fellows, finished fourth, and that's been the highlight for me. I had I had a favorite Breeders' Crown night. I won three Breeders' Crowns one night. So, and I mean, every time you go across the, the wire first in a Breeders' Crown, that's that's a Breeders' Crown favorite moment. <laughs> I'm going to go with the two that I won. <laughs> so Molly can do it. And uh, Chapter 7 last year, Chapter 7 was fun because it was a whole storyline, that, that, a background storyline, that Jeff Gregory got to start the horse and then they got snowed out and the good drivers didn't come and the drama of picking a driver. And then when Jeff got to drive him again and then he won, it, it, it felt like a, a real fun night. It was cool. Well, once again, back to Majestic Sun for me because I lived through it. Um... He made three big moves in the mile, and it was finally the the race when him and Glidemaster got eye and eye, nose to nose, and had a fair shot at each other all the way down the stretch. They both had the two toughest trips in the race, and they both fought hard to the wire. But we know who came on top. For me, it goes back to Town Pro's first Breeders' Crown. I was, I was like, we owned the six of us owned her together, and it was my first Breeders' Crown and win and, and being part owner of her was, was pretty special. So. That, I have to go back to her. My favorite Breeders' Crown moment, I think it's one of the greatest races ever, was uh, Art's Place when he won the Breeders' Crown in 90 at Pompano Park. Uh, as a two-year-old to win that night on that track, on a 5.8 mile track, to win the way he did, uh, it was just awesome. You know, you can't use that word too many times when you see races, but that performance was awesome. I guess uh, uh, the Art's Place race in Pompano, two-year-old. The year we won was Beach Town. It's a long time ago too, but uh, that was special to us when, uh, when I was with my brother. So it was probably the most memorable one. All American Nadia, and I would say that was, you know, it sure was joyous, uh, but it was uh, a, a real surprise. You know, like you're not supposed to beat Worldly Beauty, but Chris Christopheru told me in the eliminations when he only finished fourth, and she threw a shoe that night too, and he told me I said, Bernie, this mare belongs with him. He said, you know. And he gave her just, you know, a great drive and uh, beat Worldly Beauty. And it was, uh, it was quite a feat. When I win with the Goliath Bama at the Bama Lands, that was my favorite. I think I won nine of them, so each and every one of them I won was very special. I would say my favorite Breeders' Crown moment will be uh, Saturday night because I don't think uh, I've never had a starter and to have this many starters and, you know, my mom's coming over from Chicago. So I think this weekend will be my best Breeders' Crown moment, I hope.